good if your workspace is nice and clean so that you don't lose the stuff that you're working with. Now this is a lot cleaner. Before you start sewing your two sides together, you want to look at the right and the wrong side of the fabric. I've talked about this before. Some fabrics have it, some don't. This is a pair of jeans. This is obviously the right side or the side that you want to be seen. This here is the wrong side. This shouldn't be facing out. It's not really that big of a deal if you do this wrong with your stuffed animal, but if you do have a side to your fabric that you want to be seen, then you put that side facing the inside and sew it so that it is hidden on the inside. Later when you turn it inside out, you'll be able to see the side of the fabric that you want to see. To make it easier for you, use your pins again and pin the two pieces of fabric together. Use about the same amount that you use for the pattern, here, 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 especially on the arms and legs, so that when you sew, the two pieces stay where they want to be. When you're ready to go, you're going to pull your needle through with a nice knot on the end and do a simple stitch in and out. You want to do your simple stitch about three or four millimeters from the edge so that you have enough seam allowance that it doesn't fray and come apart. This is the slow way going in one side, back through that side, and the bottom, Mommy, help me. Oh, uh. like that. You don't want your stitches very far apart. They're only about, like if you look at this, where I went in the last time and my new stitch is probably only about the length of an ant or maybe three, four, five millimeters. So that your stitch is nice and tight. And when you go to turn it inside out, you won't see big holes or gaps. Here's a trick if your fabric isn't very thick so that you can go faster. Instead of going in and back and through and back, you can go a bunch right in a row by just loading up your needle in and out, in and out, like this, back and forth, under and up. I still haven't pulled it through I'm going to do enough just so it starts to get crowded, and then I can pull, pull all of those through at the same time. They're nice and small, and like that, slowly pull your thread through, and then you have a stitch that is small enough that it didn't take that long. Okay, so I have sewn all the way around my sculpture, but I'm leaving open this part here to turn it inside out and then stuff it. When you're pushing it right side out, Push hard so that the seam comes into view just a little bit so that you know that all your fabric is going to be seen. Next step, stuff it. When your guy is all stuffed, your last step then will be to sew up the hole where you stuffed it. I like to think about it like a pair of lips and you're sewing the top lip and the bottom lip together. My fabric is really thick. Yours is thinner and you should be able to fold them under. Let me show you. Okay, so I'm going to fold this piece of fabric here under and then the top one under and I'll pinch them together and it kind of looks like a mouth hey. and that's the part you're going to sew together. You can decide if you want to do a simple stitch or if you want to do a spiral stitch like this or uh, through the loop edging stitch. In this case I think I'm just going to do, because um, my fabric's so thick, I'm going to do an edging decorative stitch to finish off my Ugly doll, stuffed animal, yeti monster. Actually, he's a rabbit. Hi. Okay, here he is. Now for the fun part, the details. Watch the next video for those.